Hey, so what is going on everyone? It is me, Mr. Mario, and I thought I was just going to uh, show you all this little mod overview right here. And this is uh, a pretty basic mod, honestly. Uh, this is a mod chip for the PlayStation 1, which is honestly one of the best mods you can do, and also one of the most uh, basic ones, and kind of a, a good entry-level one as well. Uh, I did a video a few years ago where I was just, I was really happy because the first thing, uh, first mod-related thing I ever soldered successfully, and by that I mean I was able to solder things in and get it to work properly was a uh, modified PlayStation 1. I think that was a 5500 uh, model PlayStation 1 and I was installing like a Stealth 3 chip in there or something like that or Stealth 4 something like that but anyways um, right here as you can see this is a 7500 model that I'm working with and it's kind of funny it's kind of a uh, one goes out one goes in type thing and the reason why I mention that is because I actually gave that uh, PS1 the one I modded a few years ago I actually gave that to my brothers today and uh, I've been trying to work on this and it's just been so iffy with things but um, it was mostly my own negligence and just uh, not looking at things properly and probably being a little tired while working on things. So I don't know what it is, you all. I really don't know what it is, but for some reason, the PS1 is always my weakness when it comes to modifying systems. I, I don't know why. Out of all the systems like I've you know messed with or messed up something, it's always the PS1 I mess up. I don't know why. I have killed... I've worked on five PS1s to mod, and I've killed three of them. <laughs> I, I don't have a good track record with them, honestly. And even this time, this is the second time, because the first time I tried to mod a PS1 successfully, killed the first one, was trying to take off the shielding on the second one, killed that one. Uh, third one, I got it right, that was my 5500, and I ended up giving that to my brothers. This one, I actually had another model that was somewhere else, and I ended up lifting up one of the pads, so that thing was completely gone. Um, I could fix it, but I, not only I don't really have the know-how on it, but I don't really think it's really well worth it. Uh, so I picked this one up for cheap, and uh, I was having issues with this as well, too. So first off, I'll kind of show you the wiring right here. I'd never worked with a MM3 chip, and you could actually get one of these chips and program it. I bought it pre-programmed. It was like $4 from Eurasia, so it was worth it. And... Um, all you do is I took Kynar wire, wired uh, everything up to the chip itself right there. And then uh, let me try and zoom in to the points if I can. We had, uh, you know what, I might have to go into manual focus for this right here. Uh, but we have a few of the points right there. We have this big point right there. That was giving me some issues actually, but uh, it's kind of a cold solder joint, but still works out well enough. We had a point right up there. Let's see two little ones, you know, between, uh, kind of right above and right below that square chip, if you can see, and then point number four was right over here. So, honestly, this mod was pretty inexpensive, because what was it really? It was just, you know, wiring, uh, having the know-how to do it, and then the chip was four dollars. Yeah, it was, it was four dollars. Yeah, that was it. So, the chip was, honestly, it was, it was pretty cheap, and you could even do it cheaper if you program it yourself, but... It wasn't really that well worth it to me. So I have an extra one here because actually what ended up happening was I normally order with my mod chips, I order at least a pair at a time, you know, just in case one goes wrong or I want to do a second system or anything like that. So this one, I actually, what I did when I killed the other PlayStation I had, uh, I transferred that chip over to this one right here, soldered everything in, and every model is so different, honestly. Every model is extremely different. But this was the 7500, as I said. And uh, this was actually one of the easiest ones to work on. The thing is, no matter what I did, it the system worked. But none of my burn games were working on there, no matter what I did. Uh, and I went back probably two, three times. I tried rewiring everything, and nothing was working properly. Then today, <laughs> I, I don't know, I finally posted on the Eurasia form... And they said, okay, please post up some pictures. And I started taking photos, and I said, wait a minute. And I compared it with the photos I've been looking at the past few times I worked on this system. And I kind of just wanted to slam my head into a desk. Because these four wires right here, I actually had every single one of them wired in backwards. Um, it goes 5, 6, 7, 8. I was wiring them in the opposite way, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I did that improperly. So all I did was rewire them all properly, and the thing worked right there. Now, the only issue is, and I think this is more of a issue with the laser itself and the drive assembly just kind of being old. I could tweak it, but these PS1s are so cheap, it's not really worth it. Uh, it kind of squeaks a little bit, and sometimes it will read a burned game as an audio CD. But aside from that, the rest of the time it reads burn games, burn games normally just fine. So what I'm going to need to do here is I will need to grab my electrical tape, which I'm missing right now. I need to find it and tape that up and then close up this system. But 
since I showed you all the install, everything was on the top of the board right here. Uh, easy enough to do, you know, seven wires to that chip and just soldering them all into the board. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and partially put this back together and show it working. All right, so right here we got it partially uh, assembled. It's still, uh, you know, everything is still off on here, but uh, you can see the chip right there. Um, I end up just shoving a bunch of tape in here so it holds that button down thinking that the system is eternally closed up while well, the drive tray is and uh, right here I have a copy of uh, roll cage stage 2 well a uh, version of it that I actually ended up you know purchasing recently and I literally have a copy of it right here that I made so all that needs to happen if the mod chips installed successfully you pop in the disc you turn on the console and it starts spinning up and let's see right here As you can see, it got to the uh, PlayStation screen right there with no issue. So it passed the uh, first, you know, legit disc check and everything. It should go black. And if the game boots up, we're good to go. So it uh, passed all the checks and everything. As you can see, it's working now. And also, you can see kind of the disc is wobbling and all that. I think that'll be fixed up once I put everything back together. Uh, but really all I need to do at this point now is just tape that thing up right there so it's not touching anything, it doesn't short out, and we'll be good to go on that. Anyway, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. And, uh, you know, if I get another one of these on hand, I uh, just need to, you know, eventually get another PS1 uh, whenever I can find one for cheapish. But uh, once I get another one of these on hand, I might do a tutorial on it. The only problem is... Every PS1 model is just so different. That's the problem. Like, this one was pretty easy. There's others that are... The the, the layout on all of them is so different, and the installs can be all over the place, but it's not the hardest mod in the world. Anyways, signing off real this time. Later, everyone.